and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Sandy Vigil PD presents the Sports Corner Podcast. Let's get ready to rumble! Too Sweet Podcast was bound for glory. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Too Sweet Podcast. Today we'll go do some news, reviews, and rumors. The voice and the brains, ladies and gentlemen. That's our new slogan. The voice of the voiceless right here. And why I say bound for glory is because earlier the week, I watched Bound for Glory, and it was another tremendous Impact Wrestling show. Guys, well, I don't know if you know, Lee definitely knows, I used to watch Impact all the time. Old school Impact, new school Impact, I don't watch it anymore. <laughs> it's, it's not that good, but they're getting there. They're getting their good superstars there, they're getting in those good pay-per-views. Yeah, they're getting on that good level. They're getting on that great wrestling type of level their right here. Their shows are not amazing. But, but still, the pay-per-views but yeah, the pay-per-views are tremendous. Tremendous pay-per-views right here. Okay, so the timetable tonight, we're going to be switching things up a bit right here. We're going to be going through SmackDown 1000 first. Yes. We're going to be going through Raw, and then we're going to be going through Bound for Glory, baby. I have something to say about The Raw. Rumor Mill. Yep. We're going to be going through the Rumor Mill and the E&L segment. Yep. And... Guys, next week I have an announcement. Me and Lee. Actually, Lee, when do you get WWE 2K19? Uh, usually around my birthday. When is that? Uh, November the 20th. Okay. Well, guys, I'm going to be next week going through my universe mode. So we'll talk about my universe mode. And as well, the fantasy booking next week is back. I need to show WWE how to do things. And Lee is going to be my special guest as well. Lee is going to be on the fantasy book. It's a Lee. You have a week to note down some stuff. All right. For next week. But guys, we are going to go to the best or the second best, sorry. Well, the second best weekly of the week. episodic whatever television show. Yeah, television show in history. Ooh. Smackdown celebrating its 1000th episode. And it was half and half right here. Like it was. Half good, half half terrible. And and there are only a few things that were terrible. Truth TV, horrible. The Miz versus Rusev, and The Undertaker. It sucks to say that The Undertaker is terrible because we know The Undertaker is never terrible. But with after the Mysterio Nakamura match. That was a good match. Yeah, which was a great match, by the way. Undertaker just felt rushed. Like he just says, a crown jewel, DX will rest in peace. But was it? Nothing Nothing was special about that. It was just a continuation of the DX and Brothers of Destruction War. And that was it. There was nothing else. Okay. So SmackDown 1000 opened up with a video package. And yeah, it was a... This it was, a was so bad. Well, it was a good video package just to video. open up the show. But yeah. True TV, it was god-awful at its finest. Can you finest. get that crap off my TV? I'm telling you, it just gets worse and worse and Instead worse. Instead of Vince McMahon announcing a big match for tonight. Or he just goes ahead and dance like, oh, hey, Why I'm not dancing with our Truth and Carmella. I don't know. What the hell? Why not announce a massive match for tonight? Yeah. Something massive like Evolution versus The Shield and another partner. That would be good, With yeah. Ric Flair returning. It's a 1,000th episode. Make this special. But what happens if it's a two-hour show and they just go ahead and dance and all that stuff? What, what, what is this? This is horrible. This is why I don't like the PG era. Guys. Yeah, PG era sucks. This segment sucked. We're just going to get to the Usos versus Daniel Bryan and AJ it's Styles. Good match. And P.S. P.S. Get Byron Saxon off commentary. Yeah. Get Byron oh Saxon off commentary. Replace him with the Don and myself. A four-team commentary team yeah. for SmackDown. J.D. Me, you, and J.D. for SmackDown on Oh, NXT. hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. So, yeah. 
Corey Graves, Tom Phillips, myself, Idan, and JD. Perfect team. Screw Corey Fli Phillips. We only need a th four-man commentary booth. Corey Graves, me, you, and JD. That would be a really good duo, yeah. Guys, a a Byron team, yeah. Saxton is worst, worst commentator of all time. He's horrible. He's worse than David Otunga. <laughs> Probably worse than Percy Watson on NXT. I like Malno Ronaldo. Put Mal him back on the SmackDown commentary. Damn right. Damn right. Far out. I'm sick of Byron Saxton. If you're going to put him somewhere, put him on 205 Live. No, not 205 Live. Not 205 Live. The pre-show. The pre-show. That's where he belongs. Uh, he belongs in the pre-show, but if you want to put him in a Not commentary. Jerry Lawler. <laughs> Jerry Lawler in the pre-show. <laughs> Anyways, guys, this was a back and forth match. This was a good match. I really... Really, four top superstars, really. Yeah, it was One a... One in the tag... Both it was tag a teams. really, good. really good tag team match. And right Daniel here. Bryan and the WWE Champion, AJ Styles, who will probably hold it. He will beat Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan's not going to win. And if Daniel Bryan wins, that's stupid. He took the pin here tonight. He's going to lose. Daniel Bryan needs to move to Raw. And, in fact, we need a new title holder. I want Pete Dunne or Andrade C.R. Mus to hold the WWE title. And Drew McIntyre. I need to speak about Raw, guys. I'm sorry. Not right now. I'm going to save it for Raw. But, it's oh, okay. my God. Drew McIntyre. How great was he? Okay, but... First things first, we're going to go through SmackDown 1000. A good opening match. And now this weird-ass segment with the GMs. Now, it was it was weird, but it was fun seeing Teddy Long and John Laurinaitis. Um, Teddy Long missed the hashtag six-man tag team match on the main event. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, a tag team every time. But I've, got, I've got a good John Laurinaitis impression right here. My name is Mr. John Laurinaitis. I'm the executive vice president of talent relations and the interim general manager of Bob Ron SmackDown. Jesus, that's a really good That's, that's a, a really very good, good impression, guys. <laughs> yes. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> Vicky Guerrero. My ears. Yep. <laughs> My <laughs> 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 worse than that. Worse than that. Guys, anyways, we're going to talk about Something that I am very impressed with. The Evolution! My favorite stable. I'm not sure about Lee, but that's. No, 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 no. Evolution is one of my favorite factions of all time as well. Evolution, I absolutely love them! I love them. Man, my favorite superstar was obviously Randy Orton because he's my favorite of all time, practically, except for AJ Styles. Oh, yeah, Randy Man, Orton. And Randy but Orton looks good. Batista, oh, yes. David Batista. Holy up. shit, brother. I have to talk about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Go on ahead. So they were talking about, so Randy Orton was talking about how everyone was good, but. Yeah, everyone was good. And David Batista. But wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Yeah, baby, Dave Batista puts makeup on, but he was just talking about himself, Orton. They're all out for themselves except for Ric Flair. And he was talking bad about Ric Flair. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I reckon. Anyways, um, then Ric Flair, I think, spoke. Yeah, I think Ric Flair spoke. And then Triple H. He said everyone was... G oh, no. It was oh, Batista. no, it was Batista, right? Yeah, Batista. that was Batista. He said that Batista has accomplished everything in the WWE, but he hasn't beaten, beaten him. Batista. That was amazing. It was the a good teaser. But it could potentially lead to a WrestleMania match leading... A to loss. Bat leading to a loss with Batista again. It would be great to see Batista in the ring again, but with this, with the predictable we need match a like that. We need a baby face Batista, man. Yeah, it would be really cool. I want a baby face back Batista. And Randy Orton looks good, man. I want Randy Orton to move to Raw. I want Cena and Orton to have one more match. Oh, Orton beats damn. Him. Orton beats him. And then goes on to have one more world title reign. That is cool. That is cool. Orton and Styles at Mania. That'd be amazing, brother. That'd be incredible. The Baines. All right. Now, after that tremendous segment with Evolution, we have a 45-second match. A 45-second qualifying match for this quote-unquote World does Cup. This, does this do deserve a do we care? No, brother. Not even a SmackDown match is worth caring about. We and have more ranting to do on Raw anyway. So yeah, we'll Monday Night that. Raw is always about rants. 
It always is. So we don't care about that. But Edge went to uh, actually no 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 no. In English, distracted Rusev, and then allowing Rusev the Miz to win. Him. And then Lana's Rusev smash. <laughs> I reckon Lana <laughs> is gonna turn on Rusev. Oh yeah, that could lead me to <laughs> that could lead to a Lana heel turn and s- Aiden English and Lana getting it on. Edge uh, returned. I love I the cutting. Edge. I love the rated ass superstar Edge. You, you know that Edge is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, he's Edge. Not one of mine, but he's a very, very good wrestler. Edge I mean, is incredible, and amazing. I love the cutting edge. The cutting edge is always my favorite uh talk show segment, and not even Edge can get Becky Lynch <laughs> booed, <laughs> like. Edge was talking about how he's gone through all this, like he threw everything away to win the World Heavyweight title and all this stuff. And s- he said that Becky's doing the wrong thing. Like, you know, you heard you heard it yourself. It's stupid, man. Like, it's not going to get Becky Lynch booed, Becky brother. Becky Lynch is way better than Charlotte. And, right, bec- I love Charlotte's wrestling skills. Don't get me wrong, but I'm... Mu- her mic skills are worse than, than a ro- robot. Oh. Roman <laughs> Reigns. No, 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 worse no, no, than a no, robot no. and Roman Reigns. No, no, no. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Roman Reigns is worse. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. Roman Reigns is terrible at everything. But had Becky Lynch as a guest, he attempted to convince Becky Lynch that she made a bad decision choosing her career over her friendship with Charlotte Flair. Becky told him to stop disrespecting her and get out of her ring. Charlotte, me, 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 showed up. And she and Becky brawled, which was so dumb. But guys, I loved the next match. The Bar and the New Day. And another big show heel turn. Great. But this one is actually quite intriguing. This one's intriguing. Like the big show, Chokeslam, Kofi Kingston. Was it Kofi Kingston? Yes. Yeah. And leading to the Bar, winning the SmackDown Tag Team title. I reckon he's going to join the Bar. Now, um, like I asked you this question earlier. Was this, is the Bar now the second team to hold both titles? Yeah, both who was the titles? first team again? Yeah, I think it was the New Day. Like yeah, the New Day. They they were the Raw Tag Team Champions beforehand, and when they came to SmackDown, they won the Tag Team titles. Yeah. They won the SmackDown same Tag Team titles off the New Day. I reckon Bar is a good fit. I like the Bludgeon Brothers, but obviously there's injured. Yeah, so Eric Rowan's injured. I don't know about Luke Harper. I reckon the Bludgeon Brothers come back and defeat... The bar at WrestleMania. That's a good war, man. That's a like war machine. <laughs> That'd war be rated. incredible, yeah. Like war machine, yeah. So I'm not sure where they're going to be going with that. Like, th- are they going to be having the bar's faces, or are they going to be keeping them heel? Um, I think they should keep them heel. I reckon war m- war raiders should come back. Well, no, no, no. The Bludgeon Brothers. You know, they're on the main roster. I know, oh. but the, yeah, Raw Raiders should go b- up to the main roster. Oh, yeah, right, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Bludger Brothers return, win the tag team titles, and the Raw Raiders come out and say, you really think? Imagine the Bludgeon you Brothers. You are the best team. Imagine the Bludgeon Brothers versus War Raiders. That'd be incredible as hell. Yeah, that'd be the most epic war anyone would see. Do they have, no, they don't have the War Raiders yet. Well, yeah, NXT has the War Raiders. Yeah, but not on, not on WWE 2K19. I was going to do that. Well, they, are gonna be, they will be having them, but on DLC. Oh, uh, yeah, you have to get the season pass. $45. Expensive. Yeah. Um. So, guys. The Bar 1. Big Show came out, though, before the match was ended. Chokeslam Kofi Kingston, who was not even in the match. It was Xavier Woods. Big E was legal. He got distracted by that. Turned around, massive bro kick, one, two, three. And then The Rock tweeted about SmackDown. John Cena sent in a video greeting. I don't care. Yeah, no one cares about John Cena. And Rey Mysterio versus Shinsuke Nakamura. It was another good match. The right man won. Yep. Though, again, it's a World Cup. Yeah, no one cares about it. Though, yeah, (laughs) no one really cares about the World Cup. Though, they should at least, like, follow the world thing. Like, have representatives from Japan, Scotland, uh, Bulgaria, Russia, s- uh, England. Like, you know what? Forget it. I know what's <laughs> going to happen at Crown Jewel. What? Undertake. The Brother of Destruction are going to beat DX. Oh, yeah. Triple H gets angry, turns on Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania. All right, yeah. 
So I have something about Shawn Michaels in my rumor mill. I'll get to that soon. Yep. Now, SmackDown 1000, it was okay, but there were some terrible. Uh, Undertaker only said, rest in peace for one second. Yeah, it was just immediately after Mysterio Nakamura. Like, what? Like, you could have had The Undertaker, like, congratulating SmackDown for reaching 1,000 episodes. Like, 1,000 a really big deal right here. I know. Guys, so what do you rate that show in general? I rate it like a 2.5, so... Uh, not a you know. I don't know. I, I rated it a three. It, you, you know, I had I had a good time. I had good bits here and there. And, you know, they were showing some good moments of SmackDown. And my favorite moments, like, they were showing off Eddie Guerrero with Rey Mysterio and Batista in his, in his car. Rest in paradise, my friend. Now. Yeah, rest in paradise. Now, guys. Raw. Lee, take it away. I'm not even going to yell. I'm not even going to yell. This was just another repeat. I'm not even going to yell. I'm not even going to bitch. I'm not even going to complain. All I'm going to say is that Raw is complete hell. <laughs> it's complete, complete trash. That's what it is. It's, it's complete trash. That's what it is. That's what Raw is. So the show opened up with the Dogs of War, shit name, and Dolph Ziggler actually called the three of themselves the best trio in wrestling history. <laughs> False, brother! False. If you want to look at good trios, look at the Undisputed Era before they had Roderick Strong. Look at Austin Aries, Killer Cross, and Moose. Look at the Shield back in their prime. Back in their prime, yeah. Look at the WWE version of the NWO. Now I know they were when they weren't book right, but still. Look at Evolution. Before they had Batista or Randy Orton. No, who, who just be both. Uh, Ric Flair both. They barely even counted Ric Flair when Randy Orton came in. Oh yeah, right, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, look at TNA. Test and Albert. Fortune Four. Fortune Four, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Aces and eights. Aces and eights. Dynasty. Um, uh, Ric Flair's faction on TNA, right? Dynasty is was that their name? You know? Huh? Was Dynasty um Ric Flair's faction name? You know, with AJ Styles, uh, Bobby Roode, and all that stuff. Sorry. Dynasty. Ah, uh, yeah, Dynasty. What was um? What was uh? Wh- what was uh? What's it called? Hulk Hogan's one. Hulk Hogan. Uh, immortal. Immortal. That's immortal. right. Immortal. Yeah. Immortal. Anyways, like we can think of better things than the Dogs of War yeah. and the Shield right now. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. All right, we're not even gonna go through the rest of the Dogs of War and the Shield. It was just Rollins and McIntyre having the qualify match for. To Don't open talk the show. about the main event. I'm talking about the main event. I have to talk about the end. I'm sorry. Don't talk about it. I'm not even gonna talk about the main event. I didn't care. Because I didn't even watch it. I watched it. I skipped it. it. Did you watch the end? Did you know what happened at the end? Oh, yeah. I saw the end. I saw the end of it. I watched the whole. I didn't watch the whole match, but I saw the ending. That's all I saw. Okay. So, match number one. Rollins and McIntyre for for another qualifying match for the World Cup. It was a count out. Rollins won by count outs. And Ambrose was there to help out some... Seth Rollins and bashing up Dolph Ziggler. And like then, yeah, and then the other one, Dol- Dean Ambrose got angry at Seth Rollins during Now, I will get to that. I will get to that. A recap of DX's reunion last week following a, m- following a uh, message from the Brothers of Destruction. Now, again, I'm not sure if this is Do worth care. Do we care? I'm not sure if this is worth no. caring about. No, 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 no. This ain't worth caring about. No, no, I know what I'm ranting on. <sighs> yeah, yeah. You're going well, ahead, cuz. We're, we're ranting on. Ember Bobby. Moon and Nia Jax. Do we care? Hell now. What the hell 
are the doing Amber Moon and Nia Jax, even though we don't even care about her turn anymore. Turn her heel. Make her turn on Ember Moon. Like, what's so special about or this tag team match? have huh? Ember Moon turn on Nia and have Ember Moon make a faction and turn heel. Damn, brother. Though still, again, what makes this match so special? We don't care about Tamina or Dana freaking Brooke. She's the worst women's wrestler. Aside from Bailey. No, nah, Bailey's a good wrestler. Well, look at Bailey right now. Yeah, she, I know. She's the worst she's ever been. I know, because WWE can't book her right. And Asuka, she's also, she's also been terrible. All right, now, Moon and Jax won, and then it led to, like, it led to a Battle Royal type of teaser. Wait. And they have Tori Wilson in for this Battle Royal? Like, I don't know what they what they're doing with this evolution type of pay-per-view. I have no idea what they're doing with evolution. So, anyways, we don't really care about the tag team match. And a recap of the Bellas turning on Ronda Rousey. Again, we don't care. Again, we don't care, but Ronda Rousey with that one-liner. The only door... Was it like the only door you're able to fit in is John Cena's bedroom? No. The only door that you only that you can only open and go through is it's John Cena's, Cena's bedroom. bedroom. Oh yeah. yeah, right, right, yeah. I don't know. Look, Raw is so forgettable this week. I forgot. I forgot what Ronda Rousey said. <laughs> like it's easy to forget. The Rosen with a three, mate. Oh boy. Yeah, NBA starts tonight. All right. Started yesterday, but well, yeah, yeah started the other day, but whatever. Dolph Ziggler and Dean Ambrose for another qualifying match. Now. It was fair on its own right. And after the match, like, Rollins and Ambrose were shoving each other, and big dog Roman Reigns <laughs> tries to break it up. Corporate Corbin comes out, and they announce a- another six-man tag team match. The same main Sh- event over. Shit. The over. same shit. Over and over and over again. This is classic Re- Monday Night Raw at its point. Repeat, Roman, repeat, Roman, Roman. Instead of putting Bella or Owens or the Destroyer, Bobby Lashley in the main event. Or the Scottish Psychopath, Drew McIntyre. No. They, they p- have the quote-unquote big dog, <laughs> the workhorse. Of WWE. Workhorse? Are you kidding me? Yeah, no, workhorse gets everything on a silver platter. You know the workhorse of WWE is? Bella. Seth freaking Rollins. Dean Ambrose. All those guys. AJ Styles. Styles. Andrade. Cian Alma, Samoa Joe, Shinsuke Nakamura, the Daniel beast. Bryan, everyone. But Roman Reigns is not a workhorse. He's nothing. Adam Cole, baby. Yeah, here we go. The rest of Undisputed are shock the system. system. I love Alistair Black, you know, Lars you know Sullivan, I, Pete Dunne. I can go on and on and on. Who could be a better workhorse than Roman Ricochet. Ricochet, yes. Piedo Itami, Cedric Alexander, Buddy Murphy. Heavy Machinery, Mustafa Ali. Guys, we can go on. And Lee. This is horrible. This is the worst Ever Monday Night Raw has been. It's like watching a horror show. Honestly. It's like watching a horror show. And put better people in the main event. And you know, and you know what? When Black Ops 4 came out, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, I had no reason to care about yeah. it. Like Call of Duty Black Ops 4 had no story mode and it replaced the blackout. Lee, can I talk about the other for a sec? You can go on. Kyle O'Reilly. Oh, my God, bro. Beast, man. He's a beast. He, he, sh- he, he 
he's he will be a good singles competitor on SmackDown. Yeah. Anyways, Lee, go All on. Right. All right, so back to what I was saying with Black Ops Black Ops Four. This no 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 no. Black Ops Four is worth talking over Monday Night Raw. I rather care about Call of Duty Black Ops Four over Monday Night Raw. We could talk about Call of Duty then. All right. So Finn Balor versus Jinder Mahal again. Do we care? Hell no. Again. And again, and again, and again, these people have these two horrible wrestlers fight. Cinema Hall has given me more of a reason not to care about Finn Balor. And this mix That's match. That's hard. That's very hard to Very do. hard to say. And this mix match challenge is giving me more of a reason not to care about Finn Balor. Even Bailey. I hate this stupid mix match crap. Just You're not leave alone. it to the leave it to the actual event. Not don't put it don't sabotage Monday Night Raw with this crap. Like this What is the mixed match challenge anymore? Like ever since season one this year, it I had I barely cared about it then, and I don't care about it now. Spurs for the win. Okay. So Oh Christ almighty now. <laughs> Win this for us, Rock. Win this for Houston Rockets. Bobby Lashley versus Tyler Breeze. Now, that was the, hey, Bobby yeah. Lashley, man. He's showing good heel heat. Yeah. But yet, it's still not enough it to make like me It feels like it's forced down a little bit. Just keep it low. I don't really like how Leo Rush is Lashley, 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 Lashley all the time in my ear. Lashley. He's like Percy Watkins or whatever his name is. Yeah, Percy Watson. Keep him on 205 Live. Break up this duo with Leo Rush and Bobby Lashley. If you want to have Bobby Lashley as a heel, just make him go solo. <laughs> just have Bobby Lashley get rid of Leo Rush and go solo. So Trish Stratus and Leah were challenging Mick Mickey James and Alexa Bliss to a warm-up match before Evolution. Who really cares? And before the Authors of Pain versus Kurt Angle, <laughs> he was in vacation-like gear, vacation-like clothing, and he was with Bobby Roode and Chad Gable, and... They said his clothes were absolutely glorious, and then No Way Jose came in, and they do that whole dance thing, like, you know, last week. They were doing this. They were doing that. Yeah. What? Like, they're further killing No Way Jose, and they're not even doing anything with him. They're not even doing anything with No, Ho no Way Jose, and yet they're killing him. He was in NXT, and he had a great run. And here on Monday Night Raw... He's further dying. He's just a new Adam Rose. Yeah, new Adam Rose. With Afro hair. Alright, so Authors of Pain versus a conquistador who isn't Kurt Angle. <laughs> Cringiest GM of all time. So the Authors of Pain pulled off the ma the mask of the man and they thought it was Kurt Angle, but it were but it was revealed to be a jobber. And you could easily tell it wasn't Kurt Angle. You you couldn't see like the swelling on the back of his neck. Or is it swelling or is it fat? All right, like on the back of Kurt Angle's neck. Is it swole or is it fat? It's fat. Yeah. So yeah, we don't care about AOP anymore. Like they're further dying on Raw than anyone else. Next. Natalia versus Ruby Riot. I love Ruby Riot. Get rid of the rest of the Riot squad. And Natalia said that she wasn't going alone. She has backup. She had Bailey and Sasha Banks. And I think she returned. She had an injury, is that right? Yeah. So Sasha Sasha Banks was out in an injury. All right. So yeah, th this match ended up as an in a disqualification. Natalia won the match, 
And this is gonna lead to another six woman tag team feud. I'm gonna sick and tired of it! I'm gonna sick and tired of these six women tag team matches. Same. Alright. What's next? Elias was playing his guitar and then Apollo Cruz came out without Titus O'Neil. Good. Good riddance. But still, this isn't enough this isn't enough for me to care about Apollo Cruz anymore. Same. Like he was great in NXT and then he died as soon as he came up to the main roster. You killed his momentum. And now you're pairing him up with Elias. It's still not enough to help him out. We're not going through now the Now we are going to talk about... I'm not talking about the Not event. the whole match, the ending. I'm, I'm talking about the ending because I've been wanting to say this the whole goddamn crappy Raw. Wait a sec, guys. I need to take the microphone. We are having a rant. Roman Reigns. It's everything Roman Reigns on Raw. Guys, All the time. Let's talk. This is another reason why McIntyre needs to be the Universal Champion. He should be a main not event Braun player. Strowman, not Braun Strowman. Put no Roman Reigns. Not Brock Lesnar. True freaking McIntyre. Did you see that Claymore, ladies and gentlemen? His Claymore is like the best move on Raw right now. He just clocked the big monster among men and he made him look bad and then Braun Sh then McIntyre is like McIntyre but Cole even even Michael Cole is pushing McIntyre you can tell McIntyre is going to be the second guy the Randy Orton to <laughs> to Roman Reigns or John Cena definitely John Cena not Roman Reigns yeah well John Cena is the top uh, uh, Roman Reigns is the well, top Ro guy well Roman Reigns right now is the top guy and then it will be McIntyre and Roman competing for that. Watch. McIntyre and Roman at Fastlane takes it away from Roman. McIntyre's the champion and versus a good competitor. I would Ziegler. love that. Ziggler. Ziggler. Okay. Have them lose the Raw Tag Team titles. Uh, I don't know. When, when about? TLC or Royal Rumble? Royal Rumble. Yeah, okay. That's a perfect time to lose the Raw Tag Team titles. Have McIntyre... Yeah. Take on the big dog Roman Reigns at Fastlane or Elimination Chamber. When about whichever pay per view? Match. Maybe McIntyre can win the Elimination Chamber. Oh hell yeah, yeah McIntyre for the Elimination. Is it chamber. a SmackDown or Raw pay per view this year? Uh then no, they're going dual branded. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. so Elimination Chamber going dual branded. Imagine Batista in the WWE Elimination Chamber. Oh right, yeah yeah yeah, that'd but be amazing, guys. McIntyre made a statement. Yep. And that Claymore shows it. Yep. I absolutely love the Claymore. One of the best moves of the the Raw brand right now. Though still, it was a shit Raw, shit matches. It's not worth talking about. But what is worth talking about is Bound for Glory. Lee, you can take it away. I did not watch Bound for Glory. You should, Idan, and it was a really great paper. You could tell me all about it. So, Leah, I'm going to listen back from here. Okay, then. So, the pay-per-view opened up with a tag team match of Rich Swan and Willie Mack versus Matt Seidel and Ethan Page. And Ethan Page, this is the first time I look at this guy, and this guy's a beast. I absolutely like Ethan Page. And I have a question for the Mack. How the hell does he move and move and f move that fast? Like, it's like, oh my god, this guy is a big guy and he can move around that fast and he can do flips that easily. Like, I want to know how this guy does it. Though this match was good, Rich Swan and the Mac, I call him the Mac because of Lucha Underground, won the match. It was a 12 minute match. This gets a 3.75. It was a great way to open up the show. Eli Drake's open challenge. And the person to answer that was, by God, James Ellsworth. James Ellsworthless at an Impact Wrestling show. 
and New York hated their his guts, I must say. And they pulled off probably one of the best chants imaginable. Like, they were chanting pizza beforehand. Ellsworth says, I love pizza. And then they say, F you, Ellsworth. F you, Ellsworth. <laughs> it was a funny, it was a funny chant right there. It was a funny moment. Though it still doesn't save Ellsworth for being a shit wrestler. Though anyone who was a two-minute match for Eli Drake, he can easily mop the floor with this guy. It was a gravy train on Ellsworth. It was a two-minute match, so it doesn't get anything. Though Eli Drake alone gets three stars. He's a perfect wrestler. And then after the match, out came Abyss. Now you know Abyss, righty, Don? Of course I know Abyss. I showed you Abyss. I actually remember watching Abyss back then. I, I, I know Abyss. He was recently inducted into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. Congratulations, by the way. And he put Eli Drake through a table. And that guy can still go out there and wrestle, man. I absolutely like Abyss. The next match, easily women's wrestling match of the year. Tessa Blanchard and Taya Valkyrie. Two of the best women's wrestler you would find in the ring. These two pulled off a really great women's wrestling match. At WWE, you should be taking notes from these two wrestlers right here. This is women's wrestling right here. Tessa Blanchard and Va Taya Valkyrie. They pulled off the best match of the whole show. Aside from uh, Ohio versus everything and Brian Cage, Phoenix, and Pentagon Jr., which I will go over, by the way, in just a few short moments. Though it was a 10-minute match, Tessa Blanchard with a code breaker from the top rope, leaping like to the other turnbuckle, and then bang, code breaker on Taya Valkyrie, picking up the pinfall, and then winning, and then retaining the Impact Knockouts champion. This is women's wrestling right here. Eddie Edwards versus Moose, it ended up in a disqualification because of Killer Cross, who was a beast, by the way. And Tommy Killer Cross. And Tommy Dreamer came out. He should hang up the boots, by the way. I, I don't know how he hasn't hung up the boots yet. Though this tag team match was pretty good. This was a good tag team match. Um, Tommy Dreamer could still go out there and wrestle. Edwards and Dreamer picked up the win. It was a no disqualification tag team match. Nine minutes gets three stars for me. And after the match, Moose and Cross Apron power bombed Eddie Edwards. It was so ruthless. More ruthless than Kevin Owens. Ohio versus everything versus Pentagon Jr., Phoenix, and Brian Cage. Do I even have to say anything? This match, aside from Blanchard and Valkyrie, this was the best match of the whole damn pay-per-view. Like Ray Phoenix. What more can I say about Ray Phoenix? Like, the height of this guy, the movements of this guy, the speed, the agility. Like, he is so incredible. And he even did a cutter. Like, he was running on the ramp, jumped into the ring, and then cuttered one of the Chris brothers. I don't know which Chris it was. I think it was Jake Chris. And Brian Cage, he is a beast in the ring. Like, he could take super kick after super kick after super kick after super kick. And he had a fireman's carry on the Chris brothers and was holding the Chris, was holding the other Chris, and then threw him, threw them both backwards. Like, it was like, Holy crap, bro. Oh, yeah. Everyone's the MVP of this match. OVE picked up the win. It may be 13 minutes, but this is a five-star match. I love OVE, man. Ohio versus, Ohio versus everything. Like, what more can we say about Sammy Callahan? Like, he's a, he's a beast. Like, we went over his Slammiversary match with Pentagon Jr., which is one of the best matches, by the way. And s Ohio versus everything versus the team of Pentagon Jr., Phoenix, and Brian Cage again proved why this feud is one of the best in Impact Wrestling. The Latina American Exchange, LAX, 
versus the OGs. And this was a concrete jungle death match. And they planned this out as there's going to be no mat, no padding on the on the ring, I on the ring, and s- the turnbuckles are exposed. And I was like, who in the hell would be willing to wrestle with exposed wood and exposed turnbuckles? I'm like, Jesus, I can watch these guys go at it all night long. LAX and the OGs, amazing match. It may have been nine minutes, but this gets a 4.5 for me. Amazing. Johnny Impact versus Austin Aries. This was another great match. Johnny Impact had Ty on his side, and Austin Aries had his boys kill across some Moose on his side. And like we said before, Moose, Aries, and Cross, one of the best trios in professional wrestling. Modern day, that is. So this match, it was amazing. Like um Johnny Impact, like he did like um he jumped, put his legs on um the barricade and the ring apron and did a flip. Like I love John Morrison. Like <laughs> this shows you why he should be world heavyweight champion. In which he is, by the way. He won this match. Also, during this match, Austin Aries dove on Taya Valkyrie. I was like, holy shit. Shit, you should have done. You shouldn't have done that. Don't piss off Johnny Impact. So this match was good. This gets. This also gets a four point five. Bound for Glory as a whole gets a five star. It was a really great pay per view. A really great pay per view. All right, so that's it for Bound for Glory. On to the Laser Rumor Mill. Now Don has a rumor of himself. Though you're gonna be going, you you you're gonna be talking about your rumor first. Actually, no, I'll talk about it in the e m l segment or later in the e m l. Yeah, later in the rumor mill skit. Okay, so that was a small rumor mill. I couldn't find anything else for the rumor mill. Okay, so let's let's get down to it. So per P W Insider, Alexa Bliss is now scheduled to wrestle at W W E house shows this weekend, so she is cleared to wrestle. On Wrestling Observer Radio. Dave Meltzer said the tournament at Crown Jewel is called the World Cup because Quater got the Soccer World Cup because that's Saudi Arabia's enemy. Because that's Saudi Arabia's enemy. That create that they created one of their own in WWE. Pointless tournament, by the way. So pointless. SC Scoops says Impact Wrestling is looking to bring back Alberto El Patron. Possibly to work next month's tapings in Las Vegas. It'd be really cool to see Alberto Del Del Rio return to Impact Wrestling. So we'll see how things go out next month. However, per PW Insider, dis- disputes that saying there's saying there haven't been any discussions about the return. So we don't know where they're going. We don't know where Impact going. Impact Wrestling is going with um, Alberto El Patron. And they're also saying that Austin Aries flying home after Bound for Glory is not showing up at the TV tapings was not originally planned and led to rewrites for upcoming TV episodes. So this could mean this can potentially mean that Austin Aries has left Impact Wrestling? Do you want to hear my rumor? Save it for the end. Now this one, this one's a big one, and I'm sure you have this one. A source told Wrestle Talk, current plans call for Shawn Michaels no. to work WrestleMania 35 in a dream match against AJ Styles. Woo! Oh my God! I don't know that one. I don't have that one. I have a bigger one in my opinion, but that's a good one. Yeah, this. This one's the biggest one in my rumor mill right now. This one is so good. I'm not sure if this is worth. I'm not sure if Shawn Michaels is willing to go through another match, mm-hmm. especially against the greatest of all time. Okay. 
it's been discussed on Wrestling Observer Live. However, that's HBK's entire return could be off in Crown Jewel. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen in Saudi Arabia as planned. Though, yeah, there, there has been some talk about um, WWE not mentioning Riyadh Saudi Arabia. So, could this potentially mean that um, Crown Jewel has been moved? Probably. Like, imagine that in Scotland. That'd be, oh a, oh that'd be a really good yeah. pay-per-view. Crown Jewel McIntyre. <laughs> you see, you're not the only one with brains right here. I may have the voice, but I also have the brains. Okay, so continuing on. Bound for Glory was the last match on Austin Aries' Impact contract. According to producer P.D. Williams, the GOAT, by the way, on Wrestling Perspective Podcast, on Observer Live, Brian Alvarez indicate Aries' issue with Johnny Impact began as a work, but much of, much of the events this past weekend were something on a shoot. So... Yeah, Bound for Glory could potentially be Austin Aries' last match. Finally, WWE is considering moving Zack Ryder to 205 Live per Pam Burner. So maybe this could potentially be a way for WWE to use Zack Ryder again properly. You forgot the biggest rumor. I'm saving it for you. Go on. Cody Rhodes heading back to WWE. W. Oh shit! That's yeah, I heard about that one. Yeah, there have been rumors that Cody Rhodes and Paul the Club will join WWE when they become free agents, and the buzz has only gotten hotter in recent days. After Rhodes joked about going onto the WWE, going to WWE on Grimm's Toy Show, Tamatonka t- seemed to confirm the speculation Monday morning in a pair of angry tweets. Hold on, hold on, I'm going to stop you right there. Cody was with Grimm's Toy Show? Yep. Ugh. (laughs) The Elite doesn't exist without hashtag Bullet Club. Good luck in WWE. I saw that tweet, by the way. Yeah, I showed you that. We were here before. We were here during. We'll be here after. Hashtag Bullet Club. Good luck in WWE. The New Japan Pro Wrestling star is the... Driving the feud between the Bullet Club faction, the Elite, and Bullet Club, while adding fuel to the fire that major changes are on the way in these groups. Rhodes, who also competed as Stardust <laughs> in WWE, left the organization in 2016 and has been successfully in a variety of other competitions over the past two years. He has won the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship, the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, and the IWGP United States Championship, and the, N- and the New Japan Pro Wrestling. If WWE gets the opportunity, it will likely want to bring this hot commodity back into the fold. And apparently Fandango is ready for his return. Bullet Club for WWE. That's so amazing. I remember making those plans at the start of the year. Actually, no, like two years ago when they bought in AJ. But no, they never listened. But I think now is the perfect time to trigger it. Bala Styles. Guns and Gallows, Cody Rhodes, Kenny the Young Bucks, and Kenny, Kenny Omega. Omega. That'd be the most amazing faction possible. So, guys, ENL segment. All right, so what do you want to talk about for the ENL segment? Hmm, now, this is interesting, Lee. Um, you bring up a first topic and we'll go on from there. So, the first topic. I want to talk about Kurt Angle and Corporate Corbin. Since, you know, they're now going to be going over this Corporate Corbin and Kurt Angle feud. So I think this is going to be leading to a Survivor Series match. I want Corbin to win. I want Corbin to be pushed, but not as corporate crap. I want him to be a normal superstar like the lone wolf he was. Get rid of the long hair. That's fine. It looks good. I love his theme entrance. It's amazing. That theme Yeah, entrance I love the main entrance. By didn't, the way. didn't. Uh, Who do you think you are? I love it. I yeah. love it. That's, uh, he's a good wrestler, man, but he just needs to have a better role. He needs to be the lone wolf again and beat Kurt Angle. Imagine Baron Corbin beating Kurt Angle. That'd be the biggest win of his career. Easily. Though, 
the main thing is, if this is going to lead to a Survivor Series match, who would their partners be? Yeah. I, I think I think Baron Corbin would have the Authors of Pain. I think. Definitely. Uh, though that leads only two spots left. Who, who would you think? For Corbin? Yeah, for Corbin. McIntyre and Ziggler's another one. Oh, yeah. Since this past week, they've left. They left Braun Strowman, so I think yeah, this is a good, a good spot. Yeah. Though if Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn were injured, Owens and Zayn. Yeah. Uh, for Angle, Balor probably. Yeah, Balor. Probably Finn Balor. Um. <laughs> Roman, I think. The Shield. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. <laughs> It could potentially lead to the Shield. Balor could, and the Shield. It could potentially lead to a Dean Ambrose Hill turn. Potentially, yeah. Though that, though you know, Survivor Series is all that is all about SmackDown versus Raw. So yeah, um, so for SmackDown, you know, Survivor Series is all about SmackDown versus Raw. Though That's what they should do, but they're not. Though they did it last year, it, and it felt like bragging rights. You know, back bragging rights. 2009 and 10? Yeah, I didn't mind bragging rights. Yeah, bra- bragging rights was all right. SmackDown won both of them as well. I was so angry. Well, I've... Well, I can't believe I didn't tell you this, but I've always been a SmackDown guy. Like, I've... I've You've always, always been a Raw guy. Well, I've always been a blue... I've always been a part of the blue brand. And since 2017 came rolling in, I was like... The blue brand sucks. Though, yeah, SmackDown, it had a turnaround a little bit. So, yeah, I'm not sure where they're going to be going with Survivor Series. One of my favorite pay-per-views of the year. So, I think I'm going to be going with what I just said with Corbin and Angle. So, yeah, your plans for Survivor Series? Um... um I hope it's SmackDown and Raw, but if it's Corbin and Angle, I think they need to use the right superstars to get them over. But I just think it should be SmackDown versus Raw, and I ha- I do have I reckon it will be at Survivor Series Becky Lynch's team versus Charlotte. Well, like we said, it's SmackDown versus Raw. It shouldn't be like um, it shouldn't be like own brand matches. It shouldn't be Becky Lynch's team versus Charlotte's team. Like, how about Becky Lynch's team versus Ronda Rousey's team? Yeah. Four horsewomen of the WWE versus the horsewomen of the MMA. They wouldn't do that. Oh, come on, Survivor Series is the perfect time to do it. You know? Yeah, I know. Becky Lynch is the SmackDown Women's Champion. Ronda Rousey is the Raw Women's Champion. They bring in their girls. Bang! Four horsewomen of the WWE versus four ho- four horsewomen of the MMA. Simple That's as that. What I've been saying. It's what we wanted, by the way. Though I'm not sure if WWE is going to be going that route. So, in terms of the world titles, it's going to be Roman, of course, but the world heavyweight title, the WWE title. With Crown Jewel coming up, should it be either Styles or Daniel Bryan? Styles, Daniel Bryan won't win. Yeah, it's probably could be. It's probably could. It's pr- it probably could be Styles. And speaking of Crown Jewel, we did agree to this. Oh wait, not not Crown Jewel. Evolution. Speaking of Evolution, we did say that we were gonna go through predictions for Evolution, even though the paper is gonna be shit. It doesn't mean that we're going to be doing our thing. That's part of our e segment right now. We totally forgot about that. Okay, then. So, let me get Evolution up. As a ma- matter of fact, I know the match is off the bat. Let's right, start. Ju- let's, just, let, let's just put it up. Just All right, so time. let's start up with uh, Ronda Rousey and Nikki Bell. It's, it's, it's obviously going to be Ronda Rousey. No, let's talk about the first match. Let's just go. Okay, hold on. I'm I'm bringing it up. Yep. I'm bringing it up right now. Here she is. 
So Ronda Rousey versus Nikki Bella. It's going to be Ronda Rousey. Simple as that. It's going to be Ronda. This Bella's thing is just nothing but a complete waste of time. No one It's going to be Ronda. It is going to be Ronda. The last women's standing match between Becky Lynch and Charlotte for the SmackDown Women's title. Becky. Yeah, Becky for the win. But we should be thinking with our heads right here. Uh, It's going to be Charlotte because she's going to be breaking the all-time record of women's titles right here. Since, you know, uh, yeah. she, she tied with Trish. And that means we're going to be getting an eighth reign with Charlotte. Probably. The best match. Kyrie Sane versus Shayna Baszler. So, Kyrie Sane. Yep. Kyrie Sane. I, I think it's Shayna's time to move up to the main yeah. roster. Yeah. You have both Shayna and Ronda in the same arena, on the same pay-per-view, on the same night. This is the time for Shayna to move up to the main roster. It and may be Nikki Bella can win if Shayna turns heel or Shayna can even up the odds. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm thinking right now. If Shayna doesn't win, she can come in to help out Ronda Rousey to win the match. And then she turns on Ronda the next night. And then we get ourselves a Raw women's title match between Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey. What a match that would be. Rhea Ripley versus... I, I don't know who she's going to be taking on. NXT UK. It's right now airing on the WWE Network. So um, I think there's a number one contender tournament for the... Yeah, there is. There is. Okay, so... Uh, this is the next match is going to be good. Tony Storm versus Eero Shai. The May Young Classic. Now, I haven't been paying too much attention to the May Young Classic like after episode Storm. two. So, I'm excited for this match. Tony Storm for the win. Yeah. Tony Storm's going to win. Trish Stratus and Lita versus Alexa Bush and Mick. Alexa Bush Do and we Jay. care? No, brother. No. We don't care about this match. I don't care. Trish Stratus and Lita are going to win because they're the legends. Easy. Simple as that. This battle royal. Alicia Fox, Oscar, Billy Kay, Carmella, Dana, Brooke, Ember Moon, Lana, Mandy, Mandy Rose, Naomi, Nia, Jax, Peyton Royce, Sonya Deville, Tamina, and Tori Wilson. Ember Moon. I don't know. I, I Ember think Moon. I think Oscar and Ember Moon. I reckon Ember Moon. Ember Moon needs that champion reign. But I think I think this women's title match, this this battle royale is completely pointless. You know, it's basically a women's royal rumble in disguise. You know that? Yeah. Like, oh man, I I, I don't, I'm not gonna enjoy this pay per view, but I am gonna enjoy Tyree Sane and Shannon Baszler, Tony Storm and Eero Shirai. Is that right? Yeah, and I reckon Becky Lynch and Charlotte will steal the show. And the Rhea Ripley match. I'm really yeah. looking forward to that. Okay, people, that's it for two sweet podcast. Ooh. Have a good one. Next week will be a really good show. Let's hope Raw does not repeat the same show again next week. Let's hope we see Drew McIntyre versus Braun Strowman to get to have a spot. If McIntyre beats Strowman, make it a fatal four-way at Crown Jewel. That'd be really good, but I bet they're going to be repeating it again. But guys, two for life. Good night, folks! Y'all ready for this?